This video is a teardown and rebuild of the Panasonic 18 volt nickel metal hydride uh, drill. They stopped making this drill uh, about a year ago and uh, it's all lithium which is unfortunate because I prefer uh, the NIMH to lithium batteries. But fortunately parts are still available so today we're going to be replacing a switch and a heat sink and cleaning up the gears and re-greasing everything inside there. So the first thing we're going to get started on with any uh, drill disassembly is removing the chuck and this is the same on pretty much every model of drill out there. You got the uh, a flathead screw in here, reverse thread, meaning you turn to the right to loosen, stick a flathead screwdriver in there after you open up the chuck and crank to the right, break that open. Few turns, that falls out of there. And then the chuck is still tight on there, so what we want to do is um, you can use either a large Allen wrench for this. I'm going to use one of these um, socket adapters for a cordless tool because I have it handy. So you want to put this in your chuck, tighten it down very tightly, make sure it's got a good grip on it. And um, I'm going to use also this um, gator grip socket hook onto the end of this left this is a left to take the chuck off All right. and that's free so now that chuck will just spin right off the drill and we can continue with this assembly all right next step to open it up is to remove all these little torx bit fasteners in there. Uh, this is a number 10 Torx bit on the uh, EY6450. So this assembly is the uh, transmission equivalent, I suppose. This is the motor, DC motor. This is a heat sink, and this is the switch, which we'll tear into in a second. Um, uh, and this is the uh, uh, torque selector. So when you turn this uh, torque adjuster, on a gun and you hear that clicking that is uh, all you're doing basically is loosening up some uh, ball bearings on a spring set in there and we'll see that closer when we tear into it So here I disconnected the two wire leads going to the motor and uh, pulled open the switch cover so we can take a look inside. This is the problem with my drill, the um, brake is gone. But anyway, this is the heat sink back up here with the single screw holding it on. I'm assuming this is a thermometer, three uh, wire leads going down into here, the two uh, battery inputs and this would be a thermal cutoff switch I believe so that when the temperature gets too hot up by the heat sink which is designed to pull the heat away from the motor. The uh, switch down here would cut it off and um, not allow any po any power through the switch up to the motor and uh, save the motor from burning itself out. 
this uh, is a spring which gives the force of your push back on the trigger. On the trigger itself there are these two um, there they are um, contacts which slide up and down against two uh, rows of uh, resistor strips inside the uh, trigger here. Um, these I'm assuming are the brake, which is the problem I was having. I just have too much uh, dirt and grime built up in here. Moisture over the years corroded it. And these contacts I could probably replace. I tried cleaning them and I'm not having any luck getting the brake to work. So I'm just replacing the whole thing. Uh, they do pop right out though. I'm going to try to hunt around for these. I might have to do that someday when parts are not available. But they come right out, and you can see on uh, this one in particular, the contact is no longer coated with a copper conductor. It's actually arced out from all the moisture and grime over the years. Oops, getting ahead of ourselves. This is the uh, polarity controller up top here. You can see when you adjust this, that little piece moves up top, which pushes this back and forth. These are red insulators, and this uh, controls the flow of current. Um, obviously, one way is going to make the drill go forwards, one way is going to make it spin backwards. So, those uh, two little pieces in there move. And uh, these little guys control the flow of current when this pushes up against them and slides back and forth. And all this is getting replaced today. So now we're back to that number 10 Torx bit. And uh, I'm going to pull the motor apart right here with these four Torx screws. Uh, the thing with doing this is if you pull the motor apart like it is right now, the uh, spring force and the clutch at the front of the drill is going to push this apart and make uh, gears fly everywhere, I know from experience. So we want to loosen this up a turn or so, just so there's just barely a little bit of pressure on those springs. Pull the uh, gear selector arms out like that. And open it up. So inside the gear case, there are a series of these uh, reduction gears. So starting at the back of the drill here, got this little plastic piece, two screws hold that on. This is the motor. Uh, the only function of this piece is to um, keep uh, air space in here. There's uh, holes in the front of the motor for allow air intake to be pulled through and expelled out the back. This is the output shaft of the motor right here. Uh, this piece has a washer in the back and a large gear ring at the bottom. And if you wanted to take this out, you just twist the washer and it pulls right out the back. If you haven't had the drill apart in a few years, I uh, recommend soaking all these parts in naphtha. Um, or grill lighter fluid by another name, uh, which is um, petroleum solvent. It's um, fast evaporating, so you can pull the parts out and they'll be dry in five or ten minutes, and then you can reassemble, well, grease and reassemble. Um, this is, um, hopefully, you can see that on there, but I've, I have a good uh, quarter inch layer of dirt and grime. This is nap that I soaked all the parts in previously. Um, it's a pretty nasty looking naphtha in there, so you get metal shavings and dirt that works its way in and that's just going to eat away the gears over the years if you don't clean it out and take care of it. These are um, all clean in here already, so I'm just going to reassemble um, 
I re-greased these with a synthetic molly grease, although it's not really going to get hot enough in here. Wheel bearing grease or probably even white lithium grease would work just as well. So starting at the back, uh, we have each of these planetary reducers on a ring. These spin independently off of the output shaft which spins the large one reducing the ratio and uh, each of these there's three sets of these uh, reducers and each of the gears sets is a different uh, height so don't get them mixed up we can see right here the different size just on these two rings at the rear of the drill and uh, so I'm going to put this one in around the output shaft in the back Sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling to get those things in there. Okay, that one's set in. So after that first planetary set goes on, goes this outer um, ring here, which is a reducer also, and um, it also serves as the um, shifter between high and low ranges. You see that ring on the side there? Um, that slides up and down in here. I'll show you more in a second. So anyway, that goes in there, and on top of that reducer goes this piece, which locks it in. Um, let's see here. Fits in one specific way, which is this way. And the teeth on the side have to drop into their grooves, which this thing can't move. So as I was saying, this thing So that ring moves up and down, which, and it's a lot smoother when it has this other planetary ring in between it. This um, this either takes this uh, reducer in or out of uh, sequence in the transmission, so you can have these three turning directly or reduced by that other ring when you push that forward. So let's slide that on. Take a look at the engine ratios, uh, motor ratios, rather. 